just a lot welcome back to the channel baby please remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only so what i wanted to cover today was a little bit of this and a little bit of that as you know a lot of us here on this channel are bio nanogenomics long we believe that bingo is going to be an innovative company that is going to give us juicy returns in the future and while we wait for bingo to give us some juicy returns we're taking a look around at the market and seeing what else is happening in the genomics industry you may have seen a few days ago that um ultima genomics a company sprung out of nowhere claimed that they can actually sequence a genome for a hundred dollars Two years ago, this was similar to BGI, which is a Chinese company. It said it can sequence a genome for $100 a pop as well. And alongside this cheap sequencing came a big opportunity. They state that super cheap DNA sequencing could boost cancer screening, prenatal tests, and research into population genetics. Now, it's really good that we have competition like this, not competition for bio nanogenomics, but competition in general in the genomics industry. With companies continuing to come in and innovate, they challenge some of the bigger players in the game to bring down the costs. And these these guys were actually able to raise 600 million dollars in stealth mode also about a year ago we heard about this supercomputer that nvidia has so this was stated by nvidia to be the uk's most powerful supercomputer for research in artificial intelligence and healthcare this computer was called the cambridge one nvidia invested 100 million dollars into it and it had project partners such as astrazeneca gsk Guys in St. Thomas NHS Foundation Trust, Hospital here in the UK, King's College London and Oxford Nanopore Technologies. So now Ultima Genomics is partnering with NVIDIA to actually deliver this $100 genome sequencing. And out of nowhere, these guys have already started to link up with collaborations and partnerships They've partnered with a company called Olink to actually develop a solution for high throughput proteomics, which is the large scale study of proteins. And one of the biggest discoveries I found recently was genome screening at GP practices in the UK. There's actually a private clinic in the center of London. And for people who don't know, a general practice in the UK, in India, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, is the equivalent to family medicine in the US or primary care. So this private general practice is called 90 Sloan Street. It's been established over 80 years ago in the heart of London and they use lots of different innovative technology in order to give an ultimate level of high quality medicine. So these guys have been running a private study, whole genome screening and they've done it for over 109 patients. They believe this is the way forward for personalized medicine and what's really interesting is the person who's running it, Professor Ross Ellis. She said our study is the first to assess whether whole genome sequencing can be delivered by general practitioners and demonstrate that it's feasible, provides important genetic information and it's going to benefit the patient by making them preventative measures or counseling available to them. Just to give you an insight, if we look into personalized medicine, they were looking at people's genes to see if, you know, they're immune to, say, clopidogrel. Clopidogrel is a drug given to millions of patients with coronary art stents or for stroke prevention. It stops platelets sticking together and blocking your arteries. But 2% of patients, it's ineffective due to their genetic variants. So with patients that have these genetic variants where they can't metabolize clopidogrel, it remains inactive and useless. And both the doctor and patient are utterly unaware they have no idea it's not working for them they've also done whole genome sequencing on over 60 patients and they've picked up that within this study they also picked up patients have familial hypercholesterolemia familial hypercholesterolemia is a disorder that's passed down through families it causes ldl bad cholesterol level to be very high the condition begins at birth and it can cause heart attacks at an early age life expectancy is around 15 to 30 years old factor v Leiden alterations were also found by whole genome sequencing and this increased increases the patient's risk to clots by five times. So of those patients, both of the patients will gain the awareness and protection from the effects of the gene alterations so they can look at the medication they're currently on. For example, if someone's on the contraceptive pill, they want to avoid the combined contraceptive pill so they can lower their risk of clotting, lower their risk of heart attacks, strokes. There's also the ability to look at prenatal genetic diagnosis. They're going to offer, you know, whole genome sequencing and be able to screen for recessive disease. So all of this is important. Why? The next step is going to be their NHS pilot. So they're actually planning to pilot test in free NHS GP practices and they're going to be running whole genome screening there. They're going to be combining the experience from their consultant genetics team alongside a genetically trained nurse counsellor. They also want to balance and make sure it's cost effective and they believe that the main cost areas will be sequencing the genes themselves and the genetic nurse. Look at this statement by the study leader Professor Ross Ellis, an expert in oncogenetics, that the results could spark a revolution in healthcare 
and it could pave the way for testing to be rolled out to anybody who wants it within the next two to five years. With the cost of whole genome sequencing coming down, if people were to be, you know, monitored and screened, if you were to go for like a health MOT, and if this was available on the NHS, so not private, not your own pocket, but the NHS would be providing for it, whole genome sequencing could be offered to all adults on the NHS within five years to help millions cut their risk of conditions such as cancer and heart disease, experts have revealed. The health secretary here in the UK, Sajid Javid, has said that genomics was changing the future of healthcare. You know, this can save lives, it can also save a lot of money for the NHS. This study shows the potential for genome sequencing in enabling patients with life-changing diseases to receive early diagnosis by just visiting their GPs in the future. So for bio-nanogenomics, why is this important? It's another area for them to target. The NHS was already looking at rare disease diagnosis, they were test piloting on 100,000 genomes projects. Whole genome sequencing made a diagnosis in only 25% of the cases, that leaves 1,000 1,309 families without a diagnosis. Maybe it's time to look at what Sapphire can add. Joseph Butler back in 2021 in November. So let's look at the money here. Sequencing each patient's genome costs £1,800, but researchers believe this can be cut to under £1,000 for the NHS. And with the new claims of $100 full genome sequencing, we could see it widespread because if it gets cheaper, it will become more available to more people. Governments would be more incentivized to use it as well. So if they're saying, you know, it could be cut to under £1,000 for the NHS, and although £1,000 sounds like a lot, Dr. Ellis said it sounds like a lot, but to treat somebody with metastatic cancer, you could be talking about £200,000 for two years of immunotherapy treatment. Also on the flip side, it could cause distress if you were told about having genes for an illness and a likelihood and a risk factor for developing illness, but you're unable to do anything about it right now. So within the study, patients were not told about their risk of diseases with no known treatments, such as dementia. And they state that, you know, the nurse counselor that they'll bring in, specially trained staff will help them understand their results and deal with any concerns. So it's really key with patients that have actionable genetic variants where we can actually do something about it. So as more research comes out, as we manage to get the Sapphire system in different places where they're researching different comorbidities, I think that the Sapphire system could be used as an important tool alongside whole genome sequencing. So the question is, will bio-nanogenomics be able to get the installs fast enough, get the growth out there and the sales fast enough, increase the revenues without running out of cash runway? Over on Chart Mills, we take a look here, we can see the one year, two year, three year, and five year prediction, all the way between 51% and 76%. They believe there's going to be tremendous growth and believing that bio-nanogenomics is going to be generating over $300 million in revenue per year by 2026. For this year, we want to see them hit that 240 installs for the year. Within the last quarter, we only saw 12 installs, so we really want to see them ramp up and achieve that goal and surpass it. And Eric Comlin, the chief executive officer, said that they've got several systems that are in a backlog for installation. So that's what we're waiting on at the moment. We want to see it scale up, lots of installs, get revenue flowing in. And hopefully what we're going to see is as they start to ramp up their revenue, more installations institutional investors will flock to the stock as well as they start to see bio nanogenomics generate more revenue more revenues and start to scale up as a business one thing i wanted you guys to see as well is with bio nanogenomics if you go to their 10q on the website so you go to their website go to some of their sec filings you'll see here a quarterly report may 5th continuing view of company's financial position and down here you'll see that they've got part of their disclaimer we've incurred recurring net losses since we were formed and expect to incur losses in the future we cannot be certain that we will achieve or sustain profit here it says we cannot predict if we will be profitable in the near future or at all. They expect to continue finishing the years on losses for the foreseeable future as they plan to invest significant additional funds towards the expansion of our commercial organization, research and development efforts and capital expenditures among other things. They explained almost like a disclaimer a lot of other factors that is going to make it hard for them to achieve or sustain profitability. So for the 10Q document it looks like sort of a disclaimer but ultimately only the numbers will tell. So as we see revenue start to scale up, we start to look at losses as well, how much they're spending. Only the numbers are going to be able to tell. And in terms of numbers for the year 2022, they expect their revenues to be in the range of $24 million to $27 million. And as we know, the genomic space is very exciting. We don't know who is going to win, who is going to survive, who's going to be acquired, who's going to partner with who. But we can see companies like Illumina are starting to branch into long read sequencing. We can see that PacBio has actually developed short read sequencing as well. So they're starting to eat into each 
each other's market space. With me, I'm long and strong bio nanogenomics. I have 10,000 shares. I think my cost average is like $2.35 or $2.34, something like that. And I'm going to slowly be accumulating bit by bit for bio nanogenomics. I want to see how they play the game. I want to see how they manage the business over the next few quarters. But for me, I'm in it for the long run. I think they have a very unique product. We just need to see the numbers. We need to see the sales come through. Finally, please remember none of this is financial advice for entertainment only. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit us with that like, click that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video. Also, if you want to sponsor the channel, you can click the join button up here. It's only 99 cents a month and you'll be able to help me create content. This is my full-time role right now. Wishing you a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Mr. Over and out, baby.